Good morning, Jean. Good morning. Uh, here we are at Dolby on a very rainy day. We were hoping to be outside, but the weather has forced us inside into one of the meeting rooms. Could you just give us some background as to your work, your environmental artwork? Well, my name is Jean Harlow and I'm a local artist. And my focus is on, um, I'm very interested in natural history and also science, as well as art. So my early work was very much based on natural history illustration, but more recently I've moved into looking at new scientific ideas. And the one which is behind this project that we're looking at today is the butterfly effect, where one small action can have an incremental action and overall quite a massive impact at the other end of the scale. There's a, a saying about the butterfly effect, if a butterfly flaps its wing on one side of the ocean, it can create a tidal wave on the other by incremental action. So that was the focus of my own artwork which underpinned the ideas for this project, which is called the Butterfly House. And did you have sort of a, a eureka moment where you thought, yes, I can use that in a... In a well, I, I'd been, I did in a way because I'd been thinking about, um, I wanted to do something high impact with butterflies which involved other people participating. Um, my initial idea was to do a flat two dimensional piece with each member of the public making a butterfly but painting them on canvases and then covering a wall to make a huge flock of butterflies. But then I had this idea that if I did it in in small groups it could link more to the butterfly effect and at the end of it rather than having a flat piece that goes on the wall I could create a 3D installation piece. So each group which made a flat section of the wall, the walls could go together to make a house like this. This is my little model gazebo. Obviously the house that I, the gazebo that I've got is a square shape rather than this and it has walls so each of my focus groups have covered the walls a wall each with butterflies and together when I put it all together later on I'll construct a butterfly house so the process of the butterfly effect each individual person who's contributing a butterfly that they've made like this together then it grows into quite a big art installation similar to the idea of the butterfly flapping its wing on one side of the ocean but the project doesn't stop there the idea behind the project is that those people that contribute to making the art installation receive in return something like this which is a small packet of seeds um, these are seeds that I've mixed together from two different sources which will all grow into wildflowers and grasses to support real life butterflies. So the exchange and the continuation of the butterfly effect is that the people who participate go away, they take away a packet of seeds to encourage butterflies to come into their garden. So together we all create better habitats over a larger area which benefit the real butterflies through participating in this art project. So my work really focuses on those real links between science and art and how we can have a relevant impact on the environment through participating in art projects. So, the, But the North York Moors in particular, there's a, some particularly endangered butterfly species that you've been focusing on. I have. I've been working with local schools and um, when the schools have participated in this project, which is making... Um, butterflies out of the recycled materials, maybe we can talk about that later on. I've also spoken to them about the rare butterflies, the endangered ones, which are very local to the schools in the North York Moors National Park. So my particular focus group has been on clusters of schools at the southern edge of the park along the A170, Helmsley Primary School, Pickering Juniors, um, Snainton, Primary and Thornton Liddale Primary, which are all along that southern edge, where you'll find some of the the real butterflies just a little bit further north in the Dolby Forest. Um, those are the Duke of Burgundy butterfly. Um, there's some very in, 
good information is being produced by Butterfly Conservation, who have an excellent website and they've been very supportive. The Duke of Burgundy butterfly is nationally very rare. I don't know if you can focus in on this distribution map. It's mainly found in the south of England, but there are small clusters up in the Lake District and the North York Moors. Its numbers have dropped dramatically recently, and there are, there's um, a rare butterfly action plan in place for the Duke of Burgundy butterfly in the Dolby Forest areas in the North York Moor National Park. The other important butterflies are the pearl bordered fritillary and the small pearl bordered fritillary, and also one called the dingy skipper. So I've spoken to the children about. Um, the fact that they have endangered species very local to them and how by participating in projects such as this and planting wildflowers we can help all butterflies as well as the rare ones. And did you get any sense that they, that they knew about this problem with butterflies and their increasing rarity? I did, for, I did. There were individual children were quite knowledgeable about some of the butterflies and I think because of the they were quite local schools to the area. Some of them lived close to um, areas where these action plans had been put into place. So they knew about some of the species. Okay. So that was really encouraging. And they were all very interested in butterflies and very interested in following up the project by planting different species in the school garden or at home to encourage butterflies into the gardens. So you feel pretty confident with the schools you've been working with that they are indeed going to go forward and and do the planting and follow it up. It is, yes. With the schools, I was able to give them a garden voucher, which um, should help them substantially to increase the number of plants which they've got in the gardens that specifically attract butterflies, like buddleias and lavenders and hairbee. There's a marjoram. So hopefully by having those schools on board and developing these little clusters of gardens along the southern edge of the North York Moors, National Park will also provide food source for lots of different butterflies as well as supporting the, the endangered species. And so what's happening here at Dolby? Because we were earlier in the rain, we were out in the, in the forest garden there. Can you give us some... Uh... Um, there's, the other side of the project is um, working in the forest garden. We've set up a... a foraging garden at Dolby Forest. The Forestry Commission had some funding for that and the idea is that it'll encourage people to come into the forest to collect plant products uh, which they can use to make other things such as foodstuffs, jams, um, maybe some herbs or to make some um, artistic plant materials like pigments for inks or using leaves to create dyes. So what's your direct involvement with that garden? What are you going to be doing here? Taking well, some photographs when I arrived this morning, what's, what's that all about? Previously I was based in the courtyard and I got involved with the planting project and the design of it. So I've taken that to the next stage and I wanted to enable the public to participate more in the foraging aspect of things. So um, the North York Moors have financed the publication of a small guide for foraging and my involvement is to create the botanical illustrations for the guide and also to project manage some volunteers who are trialling the different plant sources and recipes that people can use. So at the end of the project we'll have a guide showing the public which plants they can use for which product and also um, how they can use that plant to make something that they want to And that's, to going, to be, that's going to be available here from, from the forest It's centre, going to be that? launched in June, where the Butterfly House in its final completion is going to be exhibited in June next year at the Danby Moors Centre, okay. um, up at the northern half of the National Park in the Inspired By Gallery. And we're going to launch the publication at the same time. There'll also be a display of work um, called the Butterfly Effect, so lots of paintings and drawings of butterflies and um, the students work will be exhibited as the art of foraging alongside that so the public can come along they'll be able to see the butterfly house 
the children can try and pick out their butterfly if they can remember which one they made. We did put everybody's name on the back, so that should help. Um, they could be able to see lots of paintings of butterflies linked to the butterfly effect. Um, work which the students have done using inks from natural sources, so an art of foraging um, exhibition. They'll be able to see the final book. There will be lots of things to do as well, so hopefully we'll be running a few, a few workshops and activities. So even though the weather is uh, not good for butterflies at the moment, you've certainly got your work cut out over the next few months getting this publication. I have indeed, yes. Ready. A lot of illustrations to do. And um, well, it's already August, so I've got some plants to paint before the growing season finishes. So do you think overall then you feel really positive about this effect, that it, that about this project that's going to have a really positive effect on... On, on, on butterflies and endangered species? I think, it, I think it'll have a very positive effect in a few different ways. I think because um, the children have, have worked on it as individual groups, as small clusters, it'd be interesting to bring everything together and for them to see the impact that their individual contribution has made to something quite large. They'll be able to go and sit inside the butterfly house and also see lots of other work about butterflies and we're for, because we're following this up by making the gardens and this, some of which might be filmed later on another, um, another part of this project it's, it'll be um, it's a long term ongoing involvement so they will I've not just gone in once to make butterflies I'm for, I'll, I'll be going back I'll be returning to the schools to encourage the development of the real butterfly gardens and encouraging them to get involved in conservation of the actual real life butterflies as well. So it's linking art and science and making it really relevant to them and showing them how they can get involved in real projects. And hopefully, if some of them will get interested and join the butterfly conservation groups, become recorders of butterflies in the future. For each person that's uh, made as a butterfly to donate to the butterfly house has signed the butterfly with their name. But obviously when they're mounted, that will be difficult to see. So we uh, had commissioned this book, which has been made from recycled paper. This is the motif that I'm using for the project. It's on this book, and it's also on the packet of seeds. Right. And every school and child and member of the public at the different events I've taken the Butterfly House to. There's Helmsley Community Primary Schools pages. They've all signed their names in this artist's Brilliant. book, which was made from sustainable paper. So we had a paper maker who Is that made this for us. It was um, one of the, the um, artists who were researching the plant products made it for us. Okay. She's researching how to make paper from nettles, although this isn't from nettles. She's called Jade. Jade, based in Scarborough. It's a lovely record, isn't it? Of and some of the younger children involved. who couldn't quite write their names oh, look. Signed, signed the, uh, with That's their great. hands, drawing around their hands. They've even put little butterflies in for us. Oh, fantastic. So we've got, these are all the people that have participated, and I think, off the top of my head, I would say about 600 people that's, that's have really taken brilliant. part and learnt about the endangered butterflies in the National Park. And they've all taken away either seeds or plants which will attract butterflies to their own place where they live. So hopefully next summer might be a better summer with... Um, for the butterflies. Better weather. Better weather. They've had it tough this summer. A bit wet, a bit like the rest of us. But hopefully next summer we might see the impact of the project on so butterfly numbers. That ripple turning into something much into more... Into a tidal wave. Into a tidal wave. <laughs> tidal wave of butterfly wings flapping across North York. Brilliant.